Hey guys, what is up? Hi, hi, hi. Welcome to our Profitable PR Pros weekly chat about all things business, running your agency, all the stuff that we love chatting about to bring in more business, higher paying clients, figure out how to serve your clients better. Um, if you haven't noticed, I show up here every single week to deliver something to you that I hope you find really valuable. I am Jen Burson. I'm the founder of Generation PR, and uh, we are a full service PR and social media marketing agency, and I'm based in Los Angeles. Speaking of Los Angeles, I want you to mark your calendars for April 23rd and 24th, where we are bringing this show Profitable PR Pros, we're bringing it on the road, and we are hosting our first ever live event. It is going to be off the hook. I am like just pulling out all the stops. It is what I would want, Elaine will be there. It is what I would want to have available to me as I was growing and scaling my business a live in-person event to network with your peers, hear from them their what's working now strategies for how they're growing their profitable businesses. We're going to set a strategy in motion for you that you can walk away. And first of all, we're gonna start implementing it there right in the room. None of this kind of corporate um, conference nonsense where some talking head who thinks they're better than you is barking at you and you're taking copious notes with your head down the whole time. Um, that is not the model that works. We are flipping the traditional conference model on its head and we are going to create an environment where you're meeting your peers, networking. This is a community that's collaborative, just like our community here online and the members of our paid programs. Um, and we are, I mean, just the amount of value that I'm packing into this two day event, I want it to be worth the price of whatever it's going to take to get you there. If you have to leave your kids, I get it. It has to be worth it to you. I have people that are uh, trying to figure out ways to come from New Zealand and Australia. I want them to leave and say, that was absolutely worth my time. There's no better event I've ever been to. So I've linked to it here in the description for this um, chat that I'm gonna do. Um, it's called the Profitable PR Pros Live Strategic Vision 2020. And it is a flash sale price right now, 50% uh, off the ticket price until it's kind of like a pre-sale um, until I think February 14th. So jump in, check it out. Let me know if you have any questions about it, but it's going to be awesome. I'm pulling out all the stops. The venue space is amazing. I'm fully taking care of you. Like you will come and feel supported in your business and you will feel as much like a guest in my own home as I could make you feel. Little perks, um, you know, just, it's gonna be awesome. Um, so check it out and let me know here if you have any questions about it. Profitable PR Pros Live, get ready. Elaine's gonna be there <laughs> and several others. But um, a lot of you, as I've been chatting about this event and how we can make it the most value packed for you, one of the topics that has come up quite a bit that people want to have covered is um, charging what they're worth and strategies for how they can charge what they're worth. And it also came up yesterday on our mastermind coaching call for a very seasoned PR professional who took a step back to have her children and just you know had her third child and is now just stepping back into full force in the agency now that she's a mom of three. And feels like that somehow put her behind in terms of what she could charge. And it seemed almost like a self-imposed penalty box, right? Like, well, I've taken a step back and I've had some time off, so I can't possibly come in and charge the rates that I was before I had kids. So it was just kind of an interesting discussion. It made me want to bring to you some strategies about how you can charge more. And what I realized is this all kind of started um, back when I started my agency, March of 2020 for me is our 15th anniversary, one five, 15 years of Generation PR. 
But when I first started, my strategy was to charge as little as I could. Um, yeah, no one thinks about that for men. That's exactly right, Elaine. We're the moms. It's a it's a mom penalty, right? And it, you know what? It's honestly self imposed. Um, I posted something about this today. I have a talk a bullet point in here about. Um, owning your time and being um, very strategic and specific about how you value your time and spend your time and what access you give clients. But I just posted in the Profitable PR Pros group a discussion about what happened to me that was the last straw. I'll hit on that again. But it's uh, taking back our time as moms and realizing that a lot of the um, fear that we have around it, it's self-imposed. It really is. Um, so, but when I first started my agency, my strategy was to charge as little as I could for so many reasons. But eventually I realized that all of those reasons were rooted in fear. And I was afraid to ask for more money because I thought that my client leads would just up and, you know, take their business elsewhere. And that I didn't really have the experience or the knowledge to merit the rates or the retainers that I really wanted to earn. And that in a world of like experts and authorities, maybe I didn't stack up. Let me know if that sounds familiar, if that's something that maybe resonates with you as the approach you're taking to your pricing strategy, give me a thumbs up. Also, I like to know who's here just because this is a conversation. <laughs> so uh, it's a little weird to like just stare in some, a camera and talk to the like internet ether. It's nice to know who's here. But I also want to hear from you, you know, with a thumbs up, a like, a heart, something so that I know that this is something that you're maybe thinking or feeling or dealing with in your business. But what happened with me over time was that, yeah, hi, Tiffany. Yep. I realized that I wasn't charging what I was worth and I needed to be charging more in order to truly scale and grow my agency. I needed to charge more. It just wasn't enough to come in low and think, well, I'm just going to charge enough to make a profit, but I'm not going to be the highest priced option because then I won't win the business. Um, you know, raising your prices, it attracts clients that are actually more than happy to pay for the work you're doing, um, you know, now charging more, I run a really profitable PR agency. That's obviously why you're here is to learn from me and others how to have a more profitable business. Um, hi, Altimis. Yes, I know that resonates with so many of us. Um, and yeah, and knowing that um, our rates are higher, the kind of ironic thing is we are attracting bigger clients. We now support billion dollar brands. So my agency has three different niches, beauty and cosmetics, health and wellness, and baby and kids. And I have a billion dollar client in each of those three niches. So I have three billion dollar companies that our agency supports. So um, I want to share with you some of the strategies that I use to implement these um, higher rates so that you can start using them today to charge what you're worth. So number one, I want you to really know your value. So when I started my agency, like so many other people, I kind of suffered from imposter syndrome. And I had this inability to really internalize what I had accomplished or um, things that were happening, what I was able to um, have happen in my business for myself or for our clients as kind of this, um, persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud, right? Like um, I had this imposter syndrome. I was also coming off being a lawyer, so I had a complete career shift. And I was like, why would anyone hire a lawyer to be their publicist? Maybe I got a couple wins under my belt and I was like, oh my God, like I'm so lucky, that's so lucky, but that's never gonna happen again. Or, oh my God, this client is trusting in me, but they're gonna find out that I, I really don't know what I'm doing, or maybe I don't know what I'm doing, right? So does that sound familiar? Like this fear of being exposed as a fraud. Um, 
you know, one of the simplest ways to kind of overcome that is, first of all, understanding why you feel that imposter syndrome. And we talk about this a lot in the programs, but it's understanding that you are stepping into a bigger role. You're showing up in a bigger way, serving in a bigger way. So you're doing something that maybe you've never done before, or you're stepping up and you're growing because you've never really operated in that way before. So it doesn't mean that you're an imposter. It means that you're taking on more responsibility and you can step up and rise to the occasion. You have what it takes. You can use kind of what got you here to elevate your role. I mean, think about someone like Jeff Bezos, right? He's never run a trillion dollar company before, right? But he's stepping into that role, right? And he never ran a company as big as Amazon, but he stepped up and stepped into that role as the company needed him and grew and he needed to step up and show up in a bigger way. So, and we've talked, you know, Oprah's talked about imposter syndrome, Maya Angelou, Natalie Portman. This has come up a lot. It's these big name people. They realize that they're showing up in a bigger way and serving their audience on a bigger stage. And so it feels intimidating. So understand why you're feeling it, but also know the facts because facts can kill fear. The simplest way that you can undermine that fear that you might not be good enough is to get a clear understanding of what other people are doing, what results they get, what do they get paid. How, you know, what I did is I researched my competition as much as possible and as often as possible. And I kind of asked myself objectively, you know, how do I measure up? What are my outcomes and are they as good as theirs? How can I get the results that other people are getting? Do I have what it takes or what can I train myself on to be the best service provider to my clients so that I can get the best results for them? Um, you know, am I as visible in the industry as my peers? So I really did my homework. And once you do your homework, you might realize that there are little opportunities for growth and you can see where you need to invest so that you can be the top of your game. Or you might just realize that you are at the top of your game, right? That you do have what it takes to get those results. And maybe like the woman in my coaching program who hasn't gotten those results in a while because she took a step back to have a baby, it doesn't mean that she can't get them again. She just needs to step into that and know that she can rise to the occasion again. The skills that she had before she was a mom translate now to where she is as a mom and now a business owner. And I've talked a lot about how we as women and moms are some of the best entrepreneurs because we're problem solvers, we're really strategic, we are very focused on how we spend our time. You know, if you've got six hours in the day, my kids are gone for six hours at school. I am the most efficient and effective person during those six hours that you possibly could imagine because I know I gotta get in and get out and get it done. So. Mom, being a mom is not a penalty. It's actually something that you um, can kind of lean on to be a really effective entrepreneur and know confidently that it makes you an amazing entrepreneur. But understand your value. My best friend is texting me. She wants to talk about a TV show we're both watching. <laughs> um, uh, so if you see me looking over, she's like trying to chat with me right now. Um, and of course, I'm like, oh, I want to fill you in on the latest like thoughts on the last episode. Anyway, um, so that's one way to really think about maybe where you're falling short or where you can gain a little bit of skill. There's a lot of training inside this Facebook group, inside my paid programs that can help fill in the gaps to give you those skills that you might be missing. The event that we're having, oh my God, would be an incredible opportunity to really figure out where you are in the market. We talk about rates inside the program all the time. Like just yesterday, somebody had a proposal and we walked through and I was like, you're on the low end. Like you need to bump up that rate. And she was really afraid to do it. And I was like, this is absolutely, um, I knew someone was gonna wanna know. We're watching the morning show. <laughs> I'm a little late to it, but we're, we're watching the morning show. Um, yeah, so, oh, and we're watching the Aaron Hernandez documentary on, I think it's on Netflix. It is disturbing and shocking and like definitely worth a watch. It's three episodes, even if you're not a sports fan. Riveting, like riveting. Um, if you don't know what that is, let me know and I can tell you one a little bit more. But um, so yes, the event or 
talk coming inside the programs, understanding where you stack up, where your rates are in the market, you'll be shocked. Um, I'm afraid to watch you, Elaine. I'm a little scared. <laughs> it seems a little like freaky to me. Um, but uh, like I won't sleep at night. <laughs> Covers pulled up to my neck like, oh. But um, anyway, so just having that discussion, one of the women inside the program realized that she was below market charging less than what she deserved to make and was able to adjust the price in her proposal and confidently ask for what she's worth. So being in a program like ours at the live events um, is a great way to have that exposure to what is happening in your industry and where you measure up. Okay, so know your value, do your research. If you feel like there are areas for growth, invest in your growth. Um, ask for what you're worth, right? If you don't ask, the answer is always no. If you don't ask, you're never going to get it. People are more open to giving you what you want. Um, if you've helped them in some way, you've made their life easy, you've stepped into your role as an expert and authority during that sales call, they see the value you're already bringing to them just on that call. Why is this happening? Oh, weird. Um, let me know, Elaine, can you still see me? Because I just had a weird thing pop up on my screen um, and my the video froze for me. Um, so we tripled our rates when we started working with larger clients. And you want to know something? They never batted an eye. when you And there's never any negotiation. When you work with larger clients, they don't negotiate. Okay, great. They um, they will not take you seriously if you are charging low rates. You will not attract a high ticket, higher caliber of client. And the irony is they leave you alone. They trust you as the expert and they let you do your job. It's the lower paying clients that you bend over backwards, you discount your services that will like make your life miserable and you will feel like you are working for every single dollar that you ask for. It's just crazy. And when you raise your rates, those higher end clients are drawn to you because they feel like if you're charging that much, then, they, then you must be worth it. And if you're charging too little, they'll think that you're not providing them with excellent service. Um, and I got other news for you. We've had a lot of discussions about this. We as smaller boutique agency owners, working from home, people like Elaine and others on this live who have so much industry experience, deep subject matter expertise that are nimble, can build out a team to solve a client's needs. We are the future of this industry. We are getting big brands leaving large agencies. Just um, Monday of this week, I had a discussion with a client lead who told me that they're leaving their agency because the agency was not nimble and they were not flexible, that they could not reach an agreement for the future for 2020 because the agency was not willing to accommodate this brands. It's actually a parent company with three different um, sub brands that we would be supporting all three of them. They need their needs are going to change. They're going to adjust. And this firm was saying, well, we have a contract and this is how we're allocating our hours. And if things change, we're going to have to adjust the contract. And the client was like, we our needs are gonna change all the time. We might have crisis comms, we might have a product launch, we might need to infuse sales into one line that we don't really know about. And I was like, that's what we do. That's what we can be to you is a flexible, nimble partner to you. That's the value we provide. So don't think that just because you're working from home, and I always joke, just because I have a cat on my desk licking his ass in the middle of, his, in the, middle of the day, makes me any less of a valuable uh, service provider and valuable partner to big, high paying clients. Don't think that. They are seeking you out. I can't even tell you how many times big brands come to us and say, our agency, it's just not working anymore. We are nimble. We have figured out how to get things done for our clients in ways that they cannot do on their own. Even with their huge budgets, one of my billion dollar publicly traded companies that has a massive budget cannot figure out how to do what we do. 
cannot figure out. We're doing these photo shoots for them, high quality print quality photo shoots, managing 15 or 16 or 20 different products coming from different vendors every month. And we and reshoots, um, tracking all these products that are coming in. And we're like, we got you, we got you. And they cannot figure it out. So just know that you being small, nimble, agile is an asset to you and ask for what you're worth. Just because you don't have a big fancy office doesn't mean you can't ask for premium prices for the results that you get. That is all that matters. So ask for what you're worth. Um, the, the third tip is I want you to set clear boundaries. And if you want to hear my big aha moment and when I decided that my time was my own, I was not going to be walking on eggshells around my clients anymore. I posted in, in our Profitable PR Post Facebook group today about a client that showed up at my house the day I got home from the hospital with my three-day-old newborn baby and said, I'm bringing you a present under the guise of, you know, like wanted to bring me a present as a way to get in the door and then sat down on the couch and had a four hour planning strategy session with me while my baby was in another room screaming his head off with our nanny who was running around frantically trying to figure out what to feed this baby because I was nursing. We did not feed this baby formula and I was running around, she was running around and I'm like, my, my breasts were throbbing because I couldn't pump and it was crazy town. And my nanny would like pop her head in and I would be like, go away, go away. So here I am trying to show that I can do it all and it's no problem and I got this and this baby's not gonna be an issue, which is crazy. Why did I feel like I had to behave that way? So yielding to your client's demands at the expense of your, expense of your family, your own well-being will never work, or at least it won't work for long. It will be at the expense of your sanity. Oh God, it was insane, right? And I was like, get out of my house. How? But it was her way, and I said this in the, in the link, you'll see it, it's there with me holding my like little, you know, little fuzzy headed baby. There's a picture, so look for that. But it really was her way of asserting herself into my life, into my business, into my time and saying, don't get too comfortable. Don't get too comfortable. We're here and we're a priority and you know, this is what it is. And I was like that never again. I'm never allowing this to happen again. So, the secret to healthy boundaries is clear communication from day 1. So you can come up with a simple set of, you know, packages or what you offer your services and lay out what you give. If it's in terms of time or access to you, resources that you share, um, you know, a lot of times clients will ask for media lists. Obviously, guys, that's a big no-no. You're not sharing any of your proprietary contacts. Um, yeah, you're a partner to your clients. You are not their employee. And also, Altamis, you are in charge of your business and how you run your business. Clients may come and say, well, we want, we want you to track your hours. That's what we want. Well, you know what? That's not how you run your business. You run your, your business on a retainer and you're not tracking your hours. You are giving them value and it's not based on how, mi how much time you spend. You're an expert, you fast track the results. They're not spending, you know, paying you for your time. They're paying you for the outcome, okay? So clients don't get to come in and tell you how to run your business. You are a partner to them. Right. So stick to your boundaries. Um, definitely setting up the um, offering, what you give to them and what they can expect, what access they have to you. Um, do it in a very friendly and open and like, we got you, we're going to take care of you and be responsive as hell during business hours. Like we will get an email and we reply in four seconds. <laughs> Clients are like, whoa, like I can't believe you responded so fast. Right, so they know that we are on top of it, but after hours, honestly, clients do not bother us because we have set it up that way. Um, you know, and maybe I will even work after hours and I will boomerang a message inside of Gmail, um, G Suite, that's how we run our business, that's what we run our email through. I will boomerang 
a message, so I'll type it up and I won't send it at night. I don't want clients to see that I'm working at night, so I will boomerang it so that they can get it first thing in the morning and see that it was sent in morning hours. Does that make sense? So that's a strategy. You wanna set those boundaries and then stick to them. Like I said, it can be tempting to answer that urgent text that comes in at midnight, especially if you're doing social media, but not following through on that impulse to like walk on eggshells and reply to every email as soon as it comes in, it, um, it, it, it's not that that, you know, you're, you're looking to impress clients. What it does is it only lets them know that you can easily be taken advantage of. And if you don't respect your time, why should they? Um, the fourth and final strategy that I want you to think about, so simple, you guys were PR pros, so I want you to start thinking of yourself as a client. I want you to start making waves. And I want you to think of yourself as the expert you are and a thought leader. People will pay more when they see you as someone who is an industry expert, a deep subject matter expert, a thought leader. Um, and so that if you are not um, really conveying that you are that, you're smart enough, informed enough, that you have a voice in this conversation, if they don't see you like that, then you will never see yourself like that either. This is another way that imposter syndrome can hold you back. So you, um, you wanna be out there. Just put yourself out there. Start inserting yourself into conversations around topics that are relevant in your niche that your ideal clients would be interested in knowing about or that relate to their businesses so you can start showing that you're an expert in the industry. Um, you, you just have to, you know, pitch yourself for articles where you can talk about being, um, you know, talk about what you know how to do as a PR professional or trends happening in an industry that you have, a, that you have as one of your niches. So um, I have over the years pitched myself for various media features. I was profiled by Apple, um, talking about how I use my iPhone to run my business as an entrepreneur on the go. They followed me around LA for two days with a video crew, um, or actually it was a camera crew, and then they put together a video with an interview, and it was featured on the Apple website for like probably five years. I mean, I was talking about a second generation iPhone, and now we're at like, the 10 or 11th generation. So this was many, many years ago, um, at least 10 years ago, but that sat on their website for five years or so. You can still see that video on my website. It gives major credibility. Um, I have been talk I've been on Forbes, Business Insider, Huffington Post, Entrepreneur, talking about what I do for clients so that um, other people can learn for themselves or can start to see that I'm a qualified expert to be sharing my know-how, so I probably am qualified to be doing this service for them. Um, and then I've also been quoted talking about industries that I'm an expert in, so trends in the beauty industry, mostly baby and kids, you know, in baby and kids trade publications, sharing my expertise on how to get in media features. Um, and then clients are drawn to us and they see us as the thought leader the top of our game in the niches that are relevant to them. So that will also help you overcome imposter syndrome and give you, you know, they may not see those articles, but you can talk about them in your decks. Um, we have a page in our uh, pro pro uh, proposal that talks about where we've been featured sharing our expertise, and it definitely helps build confidence as we're sending those proposals out. So those are my four strategies, know your value, Ask for what you're worth. Don't they always say that? Know your worth and add tax. Um, set clear boundaries so clients don't encroach on your space and they respect the business parameters that you've set up and how they can engage with you. And then start making waves, pitching yourself to media, declaring yourself as an expert, and really um, establishing your authority and your position as a thought leader in your space. Okay, really simple, but very effective ways and confidently ask for your worth in your proposals um, and you'll see that this is the way that you're able to quickly scale your business. Probably you're charging too little for your services. I have really 
um, yet to encounter somebody in my programs that I've spoken with and seen their experience, seen the results they get, seen their their drive and their passion and their commitment to their clients and thought, oh God, you're charging too much. You can't ask for that much. It's never happened. They always come asking for shockingly low rates and it's always based on fear or imposter syndrome, okay? So I hope that helps you. Um, yeah, my call to action for you is uh, check out the link I shared for the live event you will start to see um, at this event what others in, in our industry are doing and have conversations with your peers, network, walk away with strategies that you can implement to uh, grow and scale your business right away. It's gonna be a really hands-on, um, two-day interactive uh, workshop type event, but getting that exposure to how others are running their businesses is priceless. So check out our live event. I hope to see you here in LA in April. It's gonna be so good and I can hardly wait. And let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, thanks for checking in for another week of our Profitable PR Pros TV, our weekly, uh, our weekly chat about all things PR and running your agency. And I will see you here next week. Bye guys, have a great day.